Hello guys, welcome to H2O, the A to Z of Chemistry. I'm Dr. Ritu Johar, your educator for this course. States of Matter. Today we begin with lecture 20 from the course, but make sure you watch the previous ones before doing this one. In the last lecture, we discussed a few problems based on the different type of containers. So I hope they are all clear to you. And with that, I am winded up with the discussion on the four gas laws, the combined gas law or the ideal gas equation, as well as the Dalton's law of partial pressure. In case you still feel there is some doubt, you have problem uh, doing the various questions that are given in your books. Well, please feel free. You can post them in the comment section. You can message them to us on our email ID, which is always given on the last slide of the lecture, as well as you can join us on the Facebook page of the channel. The Facebook page has the same name as the channel itself, that is H2O Chemistry. And now in this lecture, we are going to talk about another very important topic from this course, and the topic is Graham's Law of Diffusion and Effusion. If you look at the previous year examination questions, either from NEET or from JE mains and advanced, you will be finding that there are many questions which are going to be asked from this topic. Understanding of the topic, derivations related to this topic, as well as the numerical problems. So we will be focusing on the theoretical part in this lecture. We will be talking what is this law all about. The, all the various types of derivations that are required for you people uh, in the examination that we will be discussing in this lecture. And in the next lecture, we will be seeing the numerical problems so that you have a thorough understanding and you can attempt any question which is going to come in the examination. So uh, we will begin with the lecture in the understanding of these two terms, first of all, that is diffusion and effusion. There is going to be a slight difference in the two terms, although the law, that is the Graham's law, is going to be applicable to both these phenomena in the same way. Right? So let us understand what is diffusion, what is effusion. So diffusion is the intermixing of two or more different gases without the help of any external agency. We do not need to do anything. We just have two or more gases. We just allow them to be together and they are just going to mix up with each other. We can understand this with the help of an experiment. And the experiment is that we take a cylinder which is filled with bromine vapors and bromine vapors, they are reddish brown in color. And on top of this, we invert a cylinder which is filled with hydrogen gas and hydrogen is colorless. Between both the cylinders, there is a separating thing that they are not mixing up with each other for now. Okay. So we can see this colorless area. We can see this reddish brown cylinder. Now slowly we are going to remove the separating disc. What is going to happen? Well, hydrogen gas, although this has much lower molecular mass than the bromine vapors, it is going to start moving downwards. Bromine vapors, they have much more molecular mass or much higher density than the hydrogen gas, yet it is going to start moving upwards. And after some time, what we will be seeing is a uniform mixture of hydrogen and bromine throughout the two cylinders and it is going to look as yellowish brown gas. Okay, there is no colorless area, there is no reddish brown area throughout the two cylinders. Now you can see yellowish brown gas, and that is a mixture of hydrogen and bromine. So they have mixed with each other, irrespective of their molecular masses or their densities, and that also without the help of any external agency. So this is what is called as diffusion. Now diffusion, uh, you can also understand by one common uh, example in daily life as well that you leave a, a perfume bottle open in one corner of the room and leave the room. After some time when you are going to enter into the room, the whole room is going to be filled with the fragrance of the perfume. How has that happened? That is because of the phenomenon of diffusion. And diffusion is not going to happen only in gases. You have studied in your junior classes that if you take a glass of water, put a drop of ink into it, you see that after some time, there is the whole water is going to turn bluish in color. So we do see diffusion happening in liquids as well and to almost a nil level, a negligible level in solids also. 
Why is it happening so? Well, it is because of the two important properties of the gases. One, that there are large spaces between the gas molecules and other, the kinetic energy of the gas molecules is very high. So we are going to see because of these two, a very high rate of diffusion in gases, less in liquids and far negligibly less in the solids. Okay, so I hope this is clear. Why is diffusion happening a lot in gases? appreciable amount even in the liquids but to a negligible amount in the solids now we are not going to focus much upon the phenomenon of diffusion as such in this lecture we are going to actually talk about the rate of diffusion and that also in the gases because here we are talking about the gaseous state of matter okay now before we can do talking more talking about the rate of diffusion let us understand effusion as well so fusion is the process by which a gas is allowed to escape through a tiny hole in the container okay so we have this as a container in this container we have a separating disc and then separating this there is a tiny hole this side we introduce some gas this is empty so after some time what are you going to see you're going to see that the gas molecules they have started escaping from this side and moving on to this side so this escape of gas from one side and moving into the other side this is called as effusion and this is going to be a kind of fast diffusion and why is it fast because here we have a pressure difference between the two areas here we have a gas here we did not have that gas right so this is an area of high pressure this is an area of low pressure so from high pressure to low pressure the movement of the gas molecules through this tiny hole is going to be called as effusion okay so the important point is that through a tiny hole and to understand this well you suppose have a deodorant spray with you okay a deodorant spray this consists of some gas which is highly pressurized and put into that container then you're going to press that uh, deodorant spray the air is going to come out the gas whatever is in that container this comes out from a very tiny hole and it has a high pressure okay so it comes up very quickly and after that once it has come out well it is going to even spread throughout the room as well so that the other person if he has not even used that deodorant he will also come to know that you have used a deodorant right so this is followed by diffusion the coming out of the deodorant from that tiny hole that was a fusion and then when it has spread into the whole room you can call that as diffusion okay so i hope this is clear what is diffusion what is effusion very importantly it is going to come out from a tiny hole to be called as effusion now when we are going to talk about the graham's law it is going to be applicable in the same way to the both phenomenon of diffusion and effusion so let us learn what is the graham's law now so please do remember whenever we are talking about the graham's law of diffusion this will be equally applicable to the phenomenon of effusion as well so this law was given by thomas graham in the year 1833 and according to this law, under similar conditions of temperature and pressure, the rates of diffusion as well as effusion of the gases, they are inversely proportional to the square roots of their densities. And mathematically, we can write this as R, the rate of diffusion of the gas, being inversely proportional to under root D okay and d is the density of the gas so supposedly we have a gas one for that the rate of diffusion we call that r1 so r1 will be proportional to under root of 1 by d1 and for gas 2 it will be r2 proportional to under root of 1 by d2 and if you divide equation 1 by equation 2 what you will be getting is r1 by r2 will be equal to under root of d2 by d1 okay and this is a density of gas so we can also write this as vapor density of gas 2 divided by vapor density of gas 1 under the root okay 
and what you have learned in the course on some basic concepts of chemistry it that the vapor density of a gas relationship with the molecular weight okay so twice of vapor density of a gas is equal to the molecular weight of the gas and if you do not remember how we got this relation what was the definition of vapor density well you can just go back to the playlist on the course some basic concepts of mystery in that the lecture on the empirical formula mass we have in detail discussion what is vapor density and the relation of it to the molecular weight okay so we have molecular weight being twice of vapor density so we can write this as also r1 by r2 being equal to under root of 2 d2 by 2 d1 or 2 vapor density of the second gas divided by 2 of the vapor density of 1 and therefore from this relation we will be getting that under root of m2 by m1 will be equal to r1 by r2 so this is a very important relationship that we have deduced for the graham's law r1 by r2 is going to be equal to under root by d2 by d1 also equal to under root of m2 by m1 where m2 and m1 they are the molecular weights of the two gases fine now before we move further well there is one important thing that you should understand we are talking about the rate of diffusion so you should understand what is rate of diffusion actually so rate of diffusion is the volume of gas which diffuses out in the time taken for that diffusion so supposedly you measure the rate of diffusion for 1 second okay so the volume of the gas which is going to diffuse in 1 second that will be the rate of diffusion for that gas okay for uh, supposedly we have gas 1 we take t1 seconds for a gas to diffuse okay and the volume that has diffused in that t1 seconds is v1 so we can write r1 the rate of diffusion to be equal to v1 over t1 now i've used a word over here a porous partition which we have not used so far so you should understand why we are saying a porous partition had there been no partition between the two gases the gases would have easily diffused that would have been a quick process of diffusion we would not have been able to measure how much volume of the gas is diffusing from one side to another in some certain time so we have introduced over here a part porous partition between uh, the two sides of a container so that first of all through a porous partition the diffusion process is going to slow down we can measure the values of the volume of the gas diffusing in a better way so the data collection will be easier plus you will be able to assess how much volume is diffusing in the given time okay so this is as far as the experimental data recording is concerned that we are using this porous partition for measuring the rate of diffusion of a gas so rate of diffusion of gas 1 r1 is equal to v1 by v2 similarly if we take some other gas and it takes t2 seconds to diffuse through the same porous partition and the volume that is diffusing in that time is v2 so we can write the rate of diffusion r2 will be equal to v2 by t2 now divide this equation 5 by equation 6 what you will be getting is r1 by r2 will be equal to v1 by t1 into t2 by v2 and if we take same volume of the gas which is going to diffuse out okay so we just calculate how much time the same volume of the gas is taking so v1 v2 will cancel because they are same volume so we will be getting r1 by r2 will be equal to t2 by t1 and if we combine this equation 7 with equation 3 and 4 which we derived on the previous page what we will be getting is that r1 by r2 is going to be equal to under root by d2 by d1 equal to under root by m2 by m1 where this is going to be equal to t2 by t1 so this means is that the time taken for diffusion of equal volumes of two gases under similar conditions of temperature and pressure is directly proportional to the square root of their densities or the molecular mass so this is what you have derived now from the graham's law 
For the Graham's law, what we started off was with the rate of diffusion. Now we also understand the relationship of the time taken for diffusion to the densities and the molecular mass of the gas. Now, supposedly, instead of the volume being equal, we take the time to be equal that we are measuring that in this much time, how much volume will be diffusing up. So what we can write is that R1 by R2 will be equal to V1 by V2 because the times will now cancel. This will be equal to under root of V2 by D1 equal to under root of M2 by M1. So these are the relationships which are frequently asked in the examination and these are the relationships that you should understand very well. Now, one more thing from the Avogadro's law that you have learned previously is that the volume of a gas, this is directly proportional to the number of moles of the gas. So instead of V1 and V2, now we can also write N1 and N2, the moles of the gas. So we can write R1 by R2 equal to N1 by N2, which is equal to again under root of D2 by D1 equal to under root of M2 by M1. But this is under similar conditions of temperature and pressure please do remember do not miss this thing okay so all that we are deriving so far is under similar conditions of temperature and pressure now very frequently in the examination a question is asked that if for a cylinder with radius r from one side a gas is released let that be ammonia for an example to understand and from the other side we release another gas let that be hcl at what length are these two gases going to meet each other so here let us understand this with the help of a diagram okay so supposedly from this end of this cylinder with the radius r that is given to us we release ammonia gas and from the other side we are releasing an hcl gas when these two gases they are going to meet each other there is going to be a reaction between them and there is going to be the formation of ammonium chloride and we can see that reaction happening both of these gases they are colorless but here when ammonium chloride is going to be formed there is going to be the formation of a white cloud which you can see okay now this white cloud is formed at which what length is what you have to tell over here how are we going to do this? Well, we can do this on the basis of the Graham's law. So supposedly, we, can, we say that this length that ammonia gas has diffused, right, is L1 and the other side, this is L2, that much the length that HCl gas has diffused. The total length can be given to you, let that be L, whatever is in the question, okay. So L1 would be L. 1 and L2 would be L minus L1. Fine. So just generalizing it that the amount of uh, the length that ammonia has diffused is L1 and HCl has diffused by L2. Now what is the volume of these two gases that have diffused? Well the volume of a cylinder is equal to 2 pi R L. Okay, so V1, the volume that ammonia gas has diffused is going to be equal to 2 pi R L1 and the volume of HCl gas that is diffused is going to be equal to 2 pi R L2, alright. Okay, you can call this one as L1, this one as L2, this one as L1, this one as L2, but just take the values correspondingly to be correct. Now you already know the relationship between the two volumes from the Graham's law and therefore you can write V1 by V2 being equal to L1 by L2 and this is going to be again equal to the under root of D2 by D1 and under root of M2 by M1 and because you know the molecular masses for both the gases well you can find up a relationship between L1 and L2 and therefore you can find the length at which these two gases they are going to meet right you can be even given a question where the area of cross section is different so the R values can change so whatever is given to you in the question this is how you are going to deal with such questions right now till now what we have studied as far as the rate of diffusion is concerned is that the pressure and the temperature conditions they should remain the same. 
but what would happen to the rate of diffusion or effusion if the pressure conditions or the temperature conditions they are going to vary so let us understand this also one by one first of all let us understand the effect of the pressure on effusion or diffusion as well okay so here we have a can okay a deodorant can with this is going to be the nozzle which you are going to spray so the deodorant is going to come out so in this can you have a gas which is under high pressure so let that pressure be p1 okay so this pressure inside the can is greater than the pressure outside for the gas and this therefore is going to be that p1 is greater than p2 okay so we have a difference in pressure and when there is going to be a difference in pressure the rate of diffusion is going to depend upon this difference of pressure okay and how is it going to depend well it is going to be directly proportional to the pressure difference more is going to be the pressure difference more is going to be the rate of diffusion and from the graham's law you've already studied that the rate of diffusion is going to be inversely proportional to under root of d so we'll combine both of these and what we will be getting is that r is going to be proportional to p by under root of t if the pressure difference is going to be more the rate is going to be more if the density is going to be more the rate is going to be less so it is going to be a combination of both these that is is going to give us the net rate of diffusion and always remember it will not be the pressure it will be the pressure difference right okay so now what we can write this as is r1 by r2 will be equal to p1 by p2 into under root of d2 by t1 or we can also write this as r1 by r2 equal to p1 by p2 into under root of m2 by m1 so this is when the pressure is varying but the temperature is constant now what do we do we change the temperature keep the pressure constant what is going to happen this just remember that r is going to be proportional to under root of t okay here it is directly proportional to the pressure difference here it is going to be directly proportional to under root of t just remember this for now okay so also you know that r is going to be again uh, proportional to 1 by under root of d so we will be combining this and what we will be getting is that r will be proportional to under root of t by d okay so this is when the temperature is going to change so similarly you can write this again as r1 by r2 equal to uh, t under root of t1 by t2 into under root of d2 by d1 so this is again going to be the same so i have not written it down i hope you all understand this right and we can combine these two effects of pressure as well as temperature to get r1 by r2 equal to p1 by p2 into under root of t1 by t2 into t2 by d1 okay so this is when the pressure and temperature conditions both are going to change how we relate this to the density and the molecular mass and the rate of diffusion okay so i hope now all the derivations these are clear to you how we have got this you should have a thorough understanding of these you should learn these also so that you can directly apply them when they are going to be direct questions as far as the derivations are concerned and also when in the numericals these are going to come you should be able to quickly apply these so now before we conclude the lecture very importantly the applications of gaseous diffusion and effusion so first application is the separation of the constituents of a gaseous mixture and this is based upon the diffusion rate of the gases being different when they have different densities so the gases which are going to have different densities they can be separated from each other by fractional diffusion or atmolysis uh for example if we have a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen gas okay so hydrogen gas is lighter than oxygen gas so hydrogen would diffuse much faster than oxygen so based upon this principle we will allow the mixture of gases to pass through a porous partition what will happen is the hydrogen being lighter this would diffuse to the other side of the porous partition much more quickly if we allow the experiment to uh be performed again and again after some time what we will be getting is pure sample of hydrogen on one side and pure sample of oxygen on the other right similarly we can use this to separate the isotopes of uranium that is u238 and u235 as their gaseous hexafluorides 
Now, the next application is marsh gas detector. Now, this marsh gas detector, this is an instrument which is used in the coal mines to detect marsh gas. And what is marsh gas? It is methane gas. And methane is an explosive gas and this can be dangerous to the workers. So, for this, we have an instrument that is called as Ensel's marsh gas detector, which is based upon the phenomenon of diffusion through porous spot. What is done is we have this diagram over here to understand. We have a porous spot and this porous spot can allow a air to pass through it. Okay. So now if an air sample consists more of marsh gas, this marsh gas would be lighter than the air sample. So it will diffuse into the porous spot much more quickly. Okay, when it is going to diffuse in, well, this is going to enter into this U tube, which consists of mercury, and it is going to create a pressure over here. High pressure, this side is going to push mercury to the other side. And when the mercury is going to touch this end, well, the circuit is going to complete and the bell would start ringing. And this would be making the uh, miners to be conscious that there is going to be presence of more marsh gas, so they should be careful. Okay, so this is the second application that is the use of the principle of diffusion in a mass gas detector. Similarly, we can uh, have a very important application in the removal of the poisonous gases, right? So the poisonous and the foul smelling gases, they are diluted by atmospheric air by diffusion and hence rendered harmless. So for example, if uh, somebody leaves a gas cylinder on, without igniting okay and the gas is just uh, into the kitchen so what do we do we just open the windows of the room of the kitchen all over our house so that the gas quickly diffuses into the atmospheric air and hence when we are going to ignite the gas we may not catch fire okay so this is one very important thing that we use in our daily life also if by chance we leave a gas cylinder on Okay, so the next application can be the calculation of molecular weights and densities of the gases by comparing the diffusion rate of the gases and diffusion is also made use in the separation of the isotopes of the element. Again, the same principle that we have for diffusion that lighter isotopes, they escape faster through the pores of the container leaving behind the heavier isotope. Fine. So this is as far as the applications are concerned so i hope the whole concept now this is clear to you people so that would be all for this lecture and you all know what we are going to discuss in the lecture well it is going to be the problems based on the graham's law so in case you have not subscribed to our channel till now please do that so that you get a notification the moment we put up the new lecture for you also do click on the bell icon any doubts they are always welcome put them in the comment section mail them to us join us on the facebook page of the channel by the same name that is h2 chemistry so see you again have a nice day god bless you